Hey, great day, family. It's Brian Hippolyte, the Manifest Mentor, and I just want to drop some jewels on you regarding setting your intentions, because that's been something we've been talking about lately, right? Setting your intentions and setting yourself up for success. A few hours ago, I posted a list, 10 things uh, that allow you to set your intentions and help set yourself up for a successful day every day. And I just want to go over them because I know some people may not have read the list and, and all the depth, the, uh, the meanings associated with it. So I'm going to break it down for you real quick in this, in, the, in this video in just a few minutes. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a mantra. Think about what it is that you really want and consider all the ways that you have been subconsciously blocking yourself from getting it. Now, tune in to your truth. Tune out all those negative thoughts, all those doubts, all those fears, all that disbelief and create a positive mantra that affirms your greatness, your potential, your power and what it is that you're going to do. Now, repeat it daily. Repeat it hourly if you need it, if you if you need to. Set an alarm on your phone, on your clock, on your watch, on your computer every few hours that would remind you of your mantra, of your goal, of that clarity that you have of what it is that you have set out to do and your ability to do so, no matter what life may bring your way. So that's number one, create a mantra. Number two is share your intentions with a friend. Nothing greater than compounded interest of energy. When you can connect with somebody, let them know what it is that you believe in and then they believe in it with you. In addition to that, they hold you accountable. Also, while you're doing that, while you're expressing what your intentions are with someone, it forces you to be more focused and more intentional, more deliberate. It encourages you to become much more clear and on articulating your ambitions. That clarity leads to direction. Again, people hold you more accountable when they can understand what your goals are. So that's number two, share your intentions with a friend. Number three is verbally share your intentions with yourself. Now you may not have those intentions in your heart, but are you speaking them on a daily basis? Are you putting them in front of you? Are you setting those reminders like we was talking about? You know, that you are speaking your intentions, affirming your intentions consistently. Your mind believes what you tell it. So tell it the things that are going to empower you. So that's number three. Verbally share your intentions with yourself. And number four is create a ritual. You're going to love this because a lot of y'all love rituals. Y'all love taking the practice and doing it over and over again. So this is something that you get to do. Like incorporate your mantra incorporate whatever your intentions are into your daily rituals let's say that you make coffee every morning while that coffee is brewing speak your mantra think about meditate on that thing that you're going to accomplish you know while you do the various things that you may already be a part of your day in terms of something you consistently do embed this new ritual of affirming your greatness speaking your intentions into that and make it a ritual something that you do continuously and repetitively something that you believe in all right the next thing to do is to meditate number five is to meditate meditate at least a good just not at least meditate for 15 minutes a day nothing more just 15 minutes a day meditation can help you with your mental health in so many ways um it also gives you the opportunity to clear your mind of all the clutter and all the things at the front of it so you can give way to the things that have been in the back of your mind waiting for the opportunity to speak to you and speak through you so a time of meditation allows you to release things so that you can um, focus on what is truly important and uh and it allows you to use these different methods of breathing um and mindfulness so that you can be a more centered and aligned being so that's number five number six is practice gratitude and that is a big one an attitude of gratitude i'm not just talking about the attitude though i'm talking about a lifestyle of gratefulness a lifestyle of gratitude be grateful when you have to pay your bills i was just talking to manifest university about that uh yesterday be grateful when you got i'm grateful for the ability to pay these bills i'm so grateful and so trusting at this point in time now on auto payment you ain't even got to talk to me about it but be grateful when you pay your bills be grateful for the ability that you have to get wealth to get resources so that you can pay your bills be grateful in everything that you do what if you woke up today only with the things that you showed you were grateful for yesterday. Would you be okay? Most people won't. 
which means that most people are not living a lifestyle of gratitude. So incorporate some gratitude in your daily practice. Uh, the next thing that you do to set yourself up for success is to ask for what you want and then let it go. Now, so whatever your spiritual practice is, whether you are praying to a deity, praying to the ancestors, praying to the universe, expressing your wants and desires, do that, but then let it go. Don't keep coming back, asking for it again, praying for it again, petitioning for it again. Clearly, that expresses that you don't have uh, the faith that what you said the first time was heard. What you asked for the first time is in, in the process of coming to you. So check your faith and stop coming back and asking for the same thing. You just start working for what is going to allow that to manifest in your life. You know, I talk, I, I'm the manifest mentor. So I talk a lot about manifesting and that's really turning a thought to a thing. Now I'm the type, I pray for it. I speak to my ancestors and, 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 and say, this is what I'm, what I'm going to do and, and, and ask them to do all types of dope things on my, on my behalf. But but do know when I'm done with that prayer, I'm not one that's about to go out and get it like no one else is about to bring it to me. I'm grateful for those who so have me on my journey. Your need to operate that way, especially when it comes to um, manifesting and moving in your greatness against your next lows that like bringing things out of your mind and putting them into your hands. That manifesting part, I think it, I speak it, I meditate on it, and then I make it manifest. Make it manifest. I make it manifest. There is labor, there is work, there is action required to make something manifest. And I'm going to go about it and do it as if nobody else is going to help me. So, don't ask for it. Let it go. Make it happen. Number eight, remind yourself daily the best way to truly set your intention is to be firm with yourself and not forgetting it. Number nine, consider how you'll feel. A large part of setting your intentions is getting super specific about what it is that you want and how you're going to feel once you get it, once you obtain it. So pull on that. Use your use your vision. See, use your vision. See, and, uh, and not... And not your sight as much. You did what I'm saying? Use your vision, not your sight. In your vision, you can see it before it happens. You can feel it. You can damn near taste it before it get to you. Use your vision. And watch what you see when you see from your vision, not your sight. Number 10, write it down the night before. I don't know how you start your day, but you can't wake up with the world and run it. Now, we all don't run the world, but we all run a piece of it. So whatever your piece of the world is that you are responsible for, that you have to manage, you cannot wake up at the same time of it as 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 your world. If your world is just your children, it, unless you have certain things already delegated in your household, it's probably not the best idea for you to be effective and efficient for you to be waking up at the same time as your children. It's probably you need some time before you have to go into your role, before you got to turn on daddy role, before you got to go in mommy role. You need some time for you to focus on yourself and all the other things that have to do with you outside of that role. So you can't wake up and immediately be getting in that role. That would just be like somebody waking up and immediately having to jump into CEO role. And I can tell you what that's like because I've done that. And then I've had to sit back and say, listen, I have to have my personal time first. I have to make, if that means I have to wake up earlier before everything that I'm responsible for so that I can have the proper time with myself, I'm going to do that. But it normally starts with the night before writing down what I need to get done in the coming day. Don't wake up with this day and start trying to get to handling this day. You should already have that planned out, mapped out the night before. No Fortune 500 CEO, no successful businessman that you know is walking into their office, their business, and figuring out what they need to do that day to be successful. No, this is planned out months and weeks in advance. We're moving by what's necessary for next year, for next quarter. We're moving ahead because we're thinking ahead. So you can't do that if you're waking up behind the eight ball. So write down what you need for each day the the, the night before before you go to sleep. Have your day your day planned out. You know, as a serial entrepreneur that runs multiple households, multiple businesses, and a large tribe of people, there is no way that I could do all of this if I wasn't being intentional and planning out what is going to happen. Now life is going life. Life is going to keep life in. 
But if you know what you need to do and you know what you need to do when something goes wrong, you got nothing to worry about. You hear what I said? That'll change your life right there if you let it. If you know what you need to do and then you know what you need to do when something goes wrong, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Problems aren't problems no more. And you know what? You're ready for your next level. But you won't be ready for your next level until you can handle the problems of this level. Don't be out of here asking for more things in this level. You could barely, if you could barely handle the stuff that you got in your hands at this level, be a better manager of yourself, a better manager of your time, a better manager of your resources, a better manager of everything that you got that you're responsible for. And I guess, and I, and I guarantee you, as you do that, you'll open up space for you to have the more that you want in your life. But set your intentions, set yourself up for success. It's Brian Hippolyte, the Manifest Mentor. I love y'all to life, and I'm enjoying connecting with you here in the, in the It's Okay to Cry Bro community. For more of my books, you can go to brianhippolite.com. A lot of things that I'll be talking about and teaching them is coming out of my powerful book, Manifesting You, 111 Keys to Unlocking Your Divinity, and, uh, and then some of my other books. So you can go ahead and check that out.